and you might notice that snack fell down and this really breaks my heart i'm, I'm terribly sorry snack 57 best prime number yeah yeah um did you know that snack is actually croton dick incarnated it's pretty cool right you you can summon croton dick by saying snack 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 into a mirror exactly three times meaning nine times snack and then you are going to summon yourself and um, croton dick snack <laughs> It was the worst bullshit I ever said in the video, seriously. Never mind. A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good <laughs> morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. We are going to do Fulani's integral identity today. It's a really important integral identity and it comes really handy in a lot of analytic number theory contexts. And we are going to use it for monster slaying, so it's yet again the prerequisite video, just like the Feynman would be proud video that I have posted a bunch of days ago. We need it for monster slaying, but also it's really useful for deriving one of the most important identities for natural log. Um, which appears in the context of the digamma function and so on and so forth. It's, it's really nice and it's not too hard to derive if you observe one tiny little thing. Also go over to Flamble Maps 2. We are having fresh new calculus content over there. So subscribe to Flamble 2 if you haven't done so already. And now we go to dive right in. Now, at first I want you guys to notice something. If we take a look at the integral, it's parameterized in two variables, namely A and B. Now the thing is, doesn't this look kind of like an integral? I mean, we have the difference of a function evaluated at A and then at B. Meaning it's kind of like the integral of some function we don't know yet from A to B in some way or B to A depending on the sign here. Meaning if we have a function for example f of x integrated then it's going to be capital F of x and if we were to apply up and lower bounds to it then it's capital F of B minus capital F of A. And we kind of have the same situation here. So why not reformulate the numerator as being an integral at first. Let's see where this goes and it works wonders, trust me. Now we are going to observe something. We are going to say at first that we have some indefinite integral, okay, very fast, just, just a few basic things um, of let's say, um, we are going to call it g for the sake of argument, g of t times x, but integrate with respect to t. Why with respect to t? Why exactly? Because um, after integration, we want to preserve our x here. So we want to apply up and lower bounds to our t at the end. Now at first I would like to make a little change of variable. So we are going to say generically um, let x times t be equal to eta for example. Mm, oh, it's a beautiful eta if you ask me. We can divide both sides by x if, if everything converges etc. We have to put a few conditions on this integral right here for everything to work out. Okay. Um, but with that out of the way, let's divide by x and then differentiate everything, leaving us overall after doing implicit differentiation with d eta over x being equal to dt. And well, we can plug this piece of crap into here, leaving us overall with an integral of g of eta times d eta over x, but 1 over x is not with respect to eta, so let's bring it to the outside. Now, we are going to assume that, for example, g it's a continuous function, all continuous functions are Riemann integrable, so the only condition that need to apply is that g is actually Riemann integrable. Then we are going to get out by, um, by the fundamental theorem of calculus on the other side that we are going to have an antiderivative capital G of eta over x. And what is eta exactly? Eta is nothing but x times t. So g of x times t over x. Okay. We got very far, but we still haven't applied up and lower bounds to it. So let's do this real quick. Let's say from A to B here, it really doesn't matter. From A to B, we're going to apply A to B to it. And what is going to be the solution here? Well, obviously, we are going to put the B and the A into T because we integrate with respect to T. So this is going to give us G of B times X minus capital G of A times X over X. Okay, so we are actually at a point where um, we can pretty fast. So, so, I mean, so I mean, this is nearly the form that we need up here. There's really not too much difference. The only thing is we, we have a certain antiderivative here, but we need an f up here. And also a and b are switched at the moment, but we can fix this by multiplying both sides um, with negative one or by changing the upper and lower bounds. Really doesn't matter. Okay, so um, 
This is good. I mean, we just need to argue what our g actually is. We know that g must be equal to f up here, meaning our f that we are having up here needs to be an antiderivative of some sort. So which function do we need to integrate such that we get f out on the other side as the antiderivative? Well, obviously just the differential of f, f prime. I mean, it does make sense. If we were to integrate the differential of a function, you are going to get the function out on the other side. So we are going to make a tiny little change of function, basically change of variable. So we are going to say, let well um, f of t times x be equal to the antiderivative that we are going to get here, g of t times x. And if we were to differentiate both sides, okay, we are going to get a factor of x on both sides, but we can cancel this out, we can compare coefficients, really doesn't matter, and we are differentiating with respect to t here. We are going to get that f prime of t times x is hence nothing but, well, and the uh, derivative of our g is going to be small g, so small g of t times x. And now we can plug everything into here. Basically, we can multiply both sides by negative one to get the form that we are desiring up here. And now we are going to plug this new definition with f prime plugged into here instead of our g into this integral representation. And we are going to play around with the expression a tiny little bit more. Hello, kitty caddies. Meaning overall, we are going to get an integral from, okay, from zero to infinity overall of, like I said before, we are going to multiply both sides by negative one, two, because we want to get g of a times x minus g of b times x. So negative the integral from a to b of and overall just f prime of t times x and at first integrate with respect to t and after that with respect to x. And now we are going to play around with this a bit more because you know we can get rid of negative sign by putting it into this integral right here so turning it into the integral from infinity to zero overall let me do this real quick so we're going to get rid of this okay we got rid of the negative sign and also we are going to assume that we can interchange our integrals i mean for nice functions this does work out where the limit exists and convergence is uniform for example etc whatever the freak uniform convergence for an integral means but you can make use of dominate convergence theorem for example to find proper conditions for function f to actually interchange the integrals overall but since we are kind of physicists here okay I'm, I'm kind of an engineer myself you could say we are just going to switch those two really no arguing required really depends on your function leaving us with an integral from a to b of an integral from infinity to zero. This always looks weird if you have an integral from infinity to zero. Kind of weird. Of f prime t times x. Since we changed the order of integration, x is going to come first and after that dt. Once again, we are going to make a change of variable, which is exactly this one right here. But beware, this time we are going to integrate with respect to x. So what is going to change is that we are going to get the eta over t and the x out on this side. Also, I want you guys to notice if our um, x goes to zero, eta also goes to zero. And if x approaches infinity, our t also um, our eta also goes to infinity. Really depends on your t that we are going to have, but without loss of generality, we, we are going to say that um, everything goes to infinity overall. Now, what is going to come out on the other side? We are going to have an integral from a to b. Then we are going to get a factor of one over t that we can bring to the front because it's independent of our variable eta or x that we are going to have. Then integral from infinity to zero of nothing but f prime of eta d eta and then dt. Now I said it before if we were to integrate the differential of a function we are going to get the function f out on the other side but with but with the upper and lower bounds applied to it. Meaning overall what we have here is nothing but f of eta from zero to uh, fr from infinity to zero. I'm terribly sorry this is just so weird to have an integral from infinity to zero. Meaning overall, if we were to plug this into here, those upper and lower bounds, we are going to get f of zero and then minus f of, well, the limit as eta approaches infinity. This is exactly this part that we are going to have here and we are just going to write it as f evaluated at infinity. Okay, it's a weird notation, but we are going to do it like this because this is the form you are going to find in the literature all the time. Meaning overall, we are going to get something that's completely independent of t. We can bring it to the outside. It's just a constant. I, I mean, this is what integrals do. Okay, if it's not parameterized, you're going to get a constant out. So f of zero minus f of infinity. 
and then just the integral left from a to b of dt over t. And well, <laughs> this is really easy to integrate actually because this right here is just the natural log of t from a to b, meaning this right here is going to be nothing but the natural log of b minus the natural log of a. And using the logarithm rules, we are going to be left with the logarithm of b over a. And you might notice we are multiplying this part by log of b over a, which is exactly what we were desiring. And this basically proves Fulani's integral identity. And, and we can find a few very nice expressions for the natural log, for example, using this integral identity. So what do we need to have if we um, want to get, for, for example, just the logarithm of um, t out on the other side. So we are going to look for the logarithm of t. This is one point where you can start. I mean, log of t is nothing but log of t over 1. Uh, so in the argument, log of t over 1. Meaning what we need to have is we need b to be equal to t and we need a to be equal to 1. Also, what we want to have here is just 1 as the factor in front of this. Meaning we need a function f that basically has the, um, has the property that at 0 it becomes 1 for example and at infinity it's going to vanish. And there's one function which does this really nicely. This is e to the negative x power for example. I mean if we let x go to infinity all of this goes to zero overall. And if we let x go to zero, then we have e to the zero of power, which is nothing but one. So this would work out nicely actually. Meaning if we were to put our thoughts together, we are going to get an integral from zero to infinity of, okay, we only need it in this form. So we get something over x, definitely. So something over x. But what is it, what we have up here in the numerator? So what I said is we need e to the negative something power. This does work out. Our a that we are seeking is nothing but one. This is what we have down here in the numerator in the argument. So e to the negative x is what we have here, minus, and then e to the, well, since this function is evaluated at b times x, we are going to get e to the negative t times x because we are going to have t here, dx. And this right here is a very nice integral representation for our logarithm of t that you can make use of. It appears when dealing with um, the analytic continuation of the harmonic numbers, it appears with the digamma function, etc, etc. Many applications of this identity here. And I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, like, subscribe, recommend, channel, if you like. I still a tiny little bit sick. Maybe this is the reason why this video kind of sucked a tiny little bit. Um, I caught a terrible cold over the weekend and I'm still trying to cure it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get better over the next few days, but I still felt like still recording a video. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. Um, don't forget merch and shit, 57 best Crotendick Prime. Until the next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. Ciao.